What a bing, what a bing. Check one, check two. Am I getting am I getting that uh, little weird scream we got last night? What the hell was that all about? Where did that come from, I wonder? I guess I must have made a mistake. I couldn't find it after. And I'm just going to wait and see what pops up here. Very quick. I was in the door 25 minutes ago. Uh-oh. I didn't plug my baby in. This could be a problem. Hang on. Oh, it's just starting soon. That's the time. Nobody can see me, right? Son of a gun. This is going to be a problem. Hit. Hold on. So the screen's okay? What the hell? Right, that looks okay. Let me bring up the page here. And we're up to the studio painting. Everybody was painting and on scaffolds. Fun, fun day. And comments still haven't popped up. That's okay. It'll pop up in a second. Get a live control room. You know, it occurred to me that Woods Hole is really doing some serious damage to the human population on this planet by propagating those lies and not using nuclear scientists, instead using people like Ken Busler to get out there with his rhetoric of potassium-40 and equate it somehow. Um, and you got to realize what Ken was saying was 90,000 Beckwells in some part, in a certain part of America, is actually legal. Uh, potassium-40. And it got me to thinking, there's not many places. But that's the one they use to determine how much was okay to pour into the ocean. So if you were pouring into the ocean per cubic meter, cesium or uranium or anything like that, one uh, that's 90,000 becquels, it's considered acceptable because Americans allowed 90,000 becquels of uh, potassium 40 which is you off gas that as you consume and not that you would get that in your water that would be extraordinary and so they're propagating this law to indoctrinate the population at an incredible rate since Fukushima happened Ken has been on the case pulling in the books that's evil that's the epitome of what evil is and so he's out there people got a lot of faith and a lot of trust into him because he's from Woods Hole He's not a nuclear scientist, so why is he out there saying that lie? Oh, you know, no one told me I must have messed up on the numbers, blah. That can't be possible because he does it in every single lecture. And in the NRC last night saying there was absolutely zero Fukushima reached America? Really? Really, Allison? Really? Seriously? To Congress! To Congress, isn't that so illegal that, um, hi Zoe, isn't that so illegal that it's, she's beating up a plate over by the stove, that's just the way it works sometimes. And so, hi Missing Sky, isn't that so illegal in every way possible that a government representative lies to Congress when they've done their own studies on the USA studies on cesium-137 for instance? They know all about the plumes that struck Canada. They know about all the plumes that struck America. How could they not know? It's their job to know. The government, TEPCO, created 5,000 plumes of their area. Did they think it really wasn't going to leave the country that it respects borders? You know, do you get any idea how actually evil what they're doing is by making those statements? Nobody is that gullible. Nobody can be that naive have that many degrees, hold that position, have that responsibility, have that many people working for them, 3,900 people, and still, no, nothing came over here, Mr. and Mrs. Congress persons. What are you going to say anyway? Because they're, they're stealing, taking money from lobbyists. You can't get a phone call into these people. It's pretty rare you'll get one of them phone you back, one of their helpers, their phone calls are all for lobbyists. That's the only people actually get hold of them. Yeah, the little small guys, you might get hold of them. Local representatives. But your congresspersons, 
And while you might get their attention, it's also because they recognize that uh, you, you're a useful idiot for them. There's nothing they're going to do. There's over 2 million products where they created, uh, they use nuclear waste, all of it's nuclear waste. Supposed to be all of it's supposed to be locked up in a man-made sarcophagus till the end of time. None of them have ever built something that can contain it. All of them says they have. All of them dumps it into the oceans, into your communities. And all of them lies. And all of them rolls out to PR firms like Woods Hole, which is, uh, they deserve uh, nothing less, you know, than to be called out for what they're doing. And that would only take one media, mainstream media, to, to call them out and point out and say, hey, you know, you got to stop doing that. You do it everywhere. You're just lying to people. That's what media is supposed to do. Right? That's what your government is supposed to do. You hired your government to look out for you. You never hired your government to sit there on C-SPAN, broadcasting out to the entire country, and say, zero showed up. There are zero foreign countries saying anything. It's zero. With three melted cores. How is that even conceivable? When the facts are extraordinarily well known, particularly on this site. And so, what does that leave you with? How uh, frightening is that, that the people you pay to tell you, to warn you, to provide, because you you hired them to do that job, right? They, the government is the people... Your servants, and you hire them to do specific jobs. Not Congress, even though Congress might say, "Oh, we put you in power." No, they're there to do a job for their fellow citizens, every one of them. And right across the board, they turn their backs on you. They know, they knew, they were aware. They had the ability to tell you. They had the ability to, as a sign of good faith, put. Nutrients and minerals back into the GMOs to take the formaldehydes and the glossophates out of it. As an act of good faith, they could easily give you a DCA tablets and iodine tablets. As an act of good faith, they could have took, gave you structured water. As an act of good faith, they could have made suggestions like this even. As an act of good faith, which is what they were supposed to do, because that's what you hired them to do, to look out for you for this kind of stuff. And what they do is they put it in bullets that are now dirty bullets and fired in other people's countries. But tell you that they're going in, putting it in sarcophagus. And whatever don't fit into the dirty bullets, they throw it in the ocean. They pour it in open pits where nobody can go and clean it up. Nobody can get at it because it's all rupturing. In those pits, they're just dumping it into the pits. They dump, like in Hanford, 450 billion gallons directly into the soil itself in not in barrels now but into the soil and then they dumped 45,000 barrels off uh, San Francisco 30 kilometers right outside the gate and you wonder why all the seals and the sea lions are losing all their hairs with all the tumors and they're trying to blame it on measles because somebody had a theory and they just ran with it because it's better than telling you the truth it's better than you taking all their pensions away for what they've done to you. A lot of these people are retired, still getting their pensions. These are criminals, unimaginable criminals. And it's all about the people that work for the nuclear industry. Uh, for some reason, are not going to say nothing because they've got no pensions, they got no jobs, they won't get no funding. Nuclear power is dead. It's as dead as it gets now. This is coming out. And the rage is just going to get more intense. I'm nodding. I'm just a drop in the bucket to what's coming. I'm going to get drowned out by the real crazies. I'm nodding. I'm just a person who looked at it all, researched it all, seen all the lies, picked apart the lies, and tried to help people understand what's truly going on. That's all I can do. i got a studio coming up where I'll interview people. Um... We like to get action. We like to go out, uh, make drones and go out there with the drones. And we find high radiation to send the drones out there. I mean, that's all kind of stuff that I, I see possible and feasible. But uh, what, what, what's the point of that? 
is to show whether or not there actually truly is an issue and we get to the bottom of it because the people we put in charge are incapable. They're capable, but they're just, their refusal to do their jobs is a warning sign you can't ignore. The fact that they were willing to say there was zero and that zero countries had made models or dispersing, dispersals, models, which is just numerous, it's so numerous, it's unimaginable how much is out there. The records of the iodine, which is just the indication that it came over. Remember, every three iodine, there's a 129, 15 million year half life. Iodine 139, remember the majority of it that comes out, the biggest number is actually iodine 132, and you ingest that nine times more effectively. And that's the fact that you can't have these reactions with just iodine, right? And wherever the cesium, because of the MOX fuel and the concoctions they use at Fukushima, which was three complete 100% meltdowns, 100% with detonations, never seen on this planet before. There was a detonation at Chernobyl, and that was graphite. It's a different combination. And the reason uh, that, you'll love this one, the reason Fukushima, Japan, has all those fuel pools on the roof because by the licensing agreement in Japan they have to reprocess everything so they regurgitate it puke it up pick out the meat and eat it again and puke it up that's literally what they're doing with it but the only problem with this is it gets more toxic and more toxic every single time you put a chew a chain reaction and they know that and what they're doing is they're creating all these exotic isotopes that they're going to use for directed energy weapons and also to solve equations. That's literally what they're exactly what they're doing. They're looking for weaponized isotopes with these weaponized concoctions. You don't need these concoctions to make power. They've been making power for a long time, many decades, and they never needed these concoctions. That's the fable. Just like potassium 40 is the fable that they feed everybody out there that's curious and go to lectures and are trying to be informed and that are stabbed to death by Woods Hole's representatives and useful idiots and murderers, mass murderers. I mean, Jay Cullen from the University of Victoria, British Columbia, that's a mass murderer. He's talking about potassium-40. Ken Buesler is a mass murderer. Phil Mason, who knows better, is probably just a dummy. But he very well could be a mass murderer because he does that too. Anybody that brings the words potassium-40 into this equation is literally the stupidest person on the planet, extraordinarily naive, or a part of the lobbyist groups out there, and which are, shouldn't exist. Corporations, companies were never allowed to have lobbyists, right? But there was an amendment to the slavery laws which gave corporations human rights and they expanded that through corporate lawyers over decades to give them all kinds of protections under the Constitution that is supposed to be desi and designed only for uh, the humans and was an amendment put there for the slaves to the original Constitution. And that would they piggybacked off that amendment to the slaveries for the slavery, to, to free black people from a tyrannical government, that same law now is being used by corporations to take away the rights of a sovereign people, the most ludicrous thing imaginable. And in 1939, Justice Hugo Black wrote how obscene that actually truly was and how so far out the borders of the constitutions, how unconstitutional and ludicrous it actually was. But yet it still exists because corporations, once they got human rights, can put all their money in offshore bank accounts. They don't pay any state, federal, provincial taxes. They kill all the mom and pop corporations. Imagine trying to open a coffee shop in a town with Starbucks. Imagine trying to open a small restaurant when you got McDonald's and Harvey's, all these corporations. And so they kill all the corporations, all the communities by bringing in these handful of corporations. Walmart, you know, China couldn't get rid of all those toxic crap 
if it wasn't for Walmart. Walmart uh, China doesn't even have to advertise. Walmart takes it all and gives it to you and your loved ones. The most horrendous things imaginable. Do you have any ideas how many container ships are shipped back? They only check 2% of all the containers coming in. But there's an incredible amount shipped back to China because they dip it in formaldehyde, they dip it in toxins. Instead of getting rid of the toxins down there, you dip it in your children's toys and your products, your cheap products that you get at Walmart, and then you ship it over. The scandals are endless. And your government doesn't do nothing about that either. But, but they know how bad this is, and in order to keep their job, that's all it's about, in order to keep their jobs, they will, they will murder you. All of them now have bought into it. None of them are willing to make the stand. None are willing to go and deal with it in, in the law enforcement communities. They'd rather arrest you and beat you up for spitting on the sidewalk. They really would. They, they can't see that far ahead. They don't understand that concept, that there is something out there that's actually important. It's just about they've been born into it, the whole system. The government employees is all inbreeds. The entire system is rotten, unimaginably dysfunctional, and unimaginably uh, so far away from constitutions and Magna Carters and the Bill of Rights idea that you could ever get from them. They become monsters in our own communities where this is the most important thing imaginable, radiation, that has infested our communities and our countries and our continents and destroyed our ocean into a sure death. Isotopes will kill all the oxygen in that ocean. It kills all the phytoplankton, and so it can't even produce oxygen. But it's so encompassing, it's coming out nonstop. It just doesn't stop. And the truth is never looked at in context of how much comes out from underneath. It's built on bedrock. A bedrock exists because... The rain and rivers have washed away the sediment over millenniums to the rock itself. And that's a river. And so they built in 100 foot of topsoil at Fukushima and built all these nuclear power plants on a fault line where it was guaranteed to have accidents. And that big 9.3 picked these buildings up and broke their backs. And the whole site is fractured from this carpet of the power that rolls through that country. And what that does is it allows all the the radiation to go down to the bedrock through rain, through snow, through the constant pouring of water onto the, the site because they put all that topsoil there. When it blew up, all the rods sank down in that 100 foot of topsoil towards the bedrock. And so every time it rains, it washes all of these new isotopes down. They should never be on that site, but they got no choice if they want to save Japan. But Japan is actually uh, completely 100% contaminated. They got readings of 300,000 beckles of cesium right up to the west coast. The winds are from the west, the prevailing winds. And which means, of course, the east we know was going to get hammered anyway at Fukushima. We know the numbers in some places at school grounds where they decontaminated are still a, a million beckles of cesium-137, but they don't bother checking for the 30 times more strontium-90. They've shut down the internet, where the only thing coming out of there now is PR firms, where you're not seeing... Hi, Zoe. Where you're not seeing the millions of Twitters every day. You're not seeing the millions of Facebooks every day. You're not seeing the thousands of YouTube videos every day since October the 25th, since they had a nine a 7.6 earthquake. And that's when all the stories started about Building 4. And they've been faking Building 4. You've seen Thunderfoot come in on my video of Building 4 about CBC faking the interior where it can't possibly exist. And he doesn't even talk about that. This is the most bizarre thing you can imagine. So people are not are not even smart enough to see that and say, gee, maybe there's something else going on. I mean, see, they came out with that law a month ago where they showed you a perfect building that is looks like Molly Maid's been in there all day, every day. There's not even 
There's not a single scratch inside of this building that's supposed to be Unit 4. That building detonated. You can go download the pictures from TEPCO's website under this video. There's a couple of thousand pictures. They're listed. And you can go into the list and download that specific, specific amount or batch of Unit 4. And you can see all around Unit 4, there was a 50-foot tidal wave storm through that site and tore out all the power. They poured salt water heroically in on it. The Fukushima 50s, that's the pictures below. And what it shows you is that site lost all power. And I've done another video, I got it down below for you. It's about all six of the reactors, explaining them all to you, and also explaining the ocean to the modeling from institutions around this planet. And I got the modelings of the air dispersal, not all of it, but, but just to get you introduced so you can see what building one, building two lo actually looks like, the original pictures. It's an incredible amount of work time, energy, and effort to put that there for you. None of this is, everything there, rather, is is the original pictures. So when, you, when I say Unit 1 in that video below, and Unit 2 and Unit 3, that's those buildings. That's recent pictures. That's accurate information from one end of the video right to the very end of it. 22 minutes. And now you have your, you have your answers. Here's what they look like. Here's what the interior looks like of some of these buildings. And then you could you could uh, make your own judgment. You can go download the FOIA releases below. There's links to the government website. These are all authentic. A lot of them are redacted. And there's millions there. There's audio tape transcriptions. It's impossible to get away from it. You can go over to E&E &E News and you can get all the stories that are aggregated from around the planet, from all universities, institutions, professors, mainstream media. And you can download, and, and or you can go over to the original sites and read it at the original sites. Thousands of pictures, thousands of emails, thousands of headlines from all over the planet. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of models of dispersions, of authentic research. And some of this information that's dear to, like Ken Busler and Woods Hole with their potassium-40. It's inconceivable amount of information. Any media out there, any NRC out there, any agency out there that even tried, that even gave it a half try, would see everything is there and can make up their own mind. We have made up our mind. We don't need to be convinced. We're not on no fence. We don't have to ask anymore. We don't wonder. We understand 100%. Because we flushed it out over a few months. We do diligent every time. I rarely, 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 very rarely have I made a mistake. Because there's so much information. I don't need to talk about stuff I'm not quite sure of yet. I'll get around, and I do. And then I'll bring it up and use it. But until then, I generally don't make a conjecture. I can make mistakes because I cover thousands of articles. And so I'm most capable of making mistakes when we're talking about thousands of isotopes. When we're talking about uh, emotional subjects. When we're talking about get your free dose of cancer whether you want it or not. Because if they're going to tell you a lie, somebody has to come out and tell you the truth. And that's not right. That's definitely not right. When you paid them to tell you the truth, when you gave them all the money they ever wanted, when you gave them every opportunity, every ability, when you let, allowed an NRC, hi Zoe, I can't do nothing, sweetie. When you allowed the NRC to have 3,900 employees and they can't find a single instance of radioactivity showing up in America from the jet streams directly from that go directly from over Japan directly to America you have the currents coming directly across the ocean slamming directly smack into it you have models after models of how the cesium-137 didn't disperse how it stayed at the surface layers just the ocean is in layers different salinities different temperatures different speeds and the modeling is very precise. And then we have 
all it is. And then our responses on our side of the ocean is they send out the woods hole crazies who equate all of this with potassium-40 in the slickest PR campaign imaginable where they're not even nuclear scientists. Yet they have nuclear scientists. You don't hear about the nuclear scientists from Woods Hole talking about Fukushima. It's a rare one. And if you do, show them to me. I'll tear them apart because he's going to be lying. That's what they do. Then again, I mean, if they don't tell some truth, how are you going to get you to look at them? So they have to mix it. So they'll be telling you good stuff, and then all of a sudden, potassium-40. Right, it turns to potassium-40, 1,500 miles out to sea. Never done that before. Never do it again. There's no peer-reviewed study shown that that can happen. That is even possible. How can you peer-review something like that, see? It's ludicrous. It's their assertions. It's their PR firms. And they got a lot at stake. They got two million products on this planet, created on purpose. Hi, Zoe. I don't know what to do with you. What's that all about? Come here. Come see Dana. Come up and say hi to everybody. Come on. Where you to? I got a ghost dog out there. <coughs> uh, hi, Stacy. Hi, Mom and Ox. DC. Cats alive. Big Now TV, I just went off for 25 minutes straight. It's just going to be a short video tonight. I haven't stopped. Stacy sends Zoe kisses. Here's Zoe, come over and say hi. And, and like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, you don't have to defend me, folks. I'm a big boy. I'm not worried about it. I understand that's coming my way. I can deal with it. It's okay if you do. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm not going to ask you to do that. There's no need to do it, in my opinion, because people that attack us will never stop. People that will demonize us, try to marginalize us, try to categorize us, because all we are, we're, I'm not an activist. Don't, ever, don't anybody ever call me an activist. All I am it's just somebody who understands what's going on, and I think it's really wrong that the system is lying and murdering everybody, and the evidence is overwhelming. It's covered so much on the site. And that, you know, if we don't do it, who will? Because we paid them to do the job, they won't do it. And there's no way to hold them accountable unless we all pick up guns and go fucking shoot them. That's not going to happen. But as this story goes out there and it wakes up, it might happen. I hope it happens. They deserve it. They don't deserve no pensions. They don't deserve no plaques on the wall. They don't deserve any recognition. They don't deserve to be admired or put up on pedestals or put in your children's school books. That is not going to happen. This, there's one thing that's going to come out of this is the power structure that exists is going to disappear in a brutal way that it deserves. There is nothing that's going to change that. I know that. I understand that. You can't change what's coming. Your robots are not here yet. The police are waking up. The military would love to get their fucking hands on you. They're waking up. They understand what you've been doing to them over the years. The whole planet is waking up. If you attack us, we'll attack you. If you bring out a plague or a false flag, we'll come for you. That's the fact. There's nothing can stop us if it comes to that. That's what I understand. That's what I see clearly. It's not some dream. It's not some fucking vision. It's a fact that the planet is not like it was. In the day of communication and education and connecting the dots... These dots are connected. These are authentic. And as people wake up, the anger will be unbelievable. And the, there's not enough police out there to stop what's coming. And it's not going to be like chaos. It's going to be like getting rid of the fuckers. It truly is. It's going to be like the night of the long knives, except there's going to be a happy ending. I can't see society breaking down. 
like the Hollywood projections. I just can't see it. We'll take care of any of the hard cases out there. Zoe, I can't do nothing, Zoe. I don't know what you want me to do. Come over here. It's getting on me uh, nerves a bit because she's whining, so I'm going to have to go deal with it. Can't let her do it. Come here. Hey, hang on, folks. That's getting to be too much. I'm picking it up really heavy. Zoe, where are you to? My Jesus. You're right there. Come over and see Dana. Come on. Come over and see Dana. Come on. What are you at that door for? Come on, come see Dana. Come over and see Dana. I was looking for you. She's very unusual for her to go over to that door. Okay, well, just remember, folks, your GMO, pet food. Check, it's probably GMO. Your baby food, check it, it's probably GMO. Your supplements, you're going to come over and say hi? Come on over and see Dana. Your supplements, they're probably GMO. Your pharmaceuticals, come up here, Zoe. Come on, babies. Come see Dana. Your pharmaceuticals, probably GMO. Most likely GMO. Everything in your corner shop, GMO. It's got no nutrients. It's got no minerals. I apologize if my accent makes it hard for people to understand. And it bugs you. If it does, go away. Don't ever come back. That's my accent. I can't change that. There's nothing I can do about it. And I wouldn't change it. I don't care about you who out there that thinks that because I have an accent that I must be a dummy or I must be useless or it must be something like that. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know who you are or what kind of life you leave, live in. I don't care. You're insignificant people that think like that. You can't be people. You can't be human to actually look at another human and consider that an issue. Like, I could fucking change that. Like, I would want to. Like, I care about what you think. That you're so petty that you would come after me for over stuff like that. Uh, unbelievable disrespect what you must have for your parents, people that think like that. I can't imagine people do think like that, but I do get attacked about that. And for some reason, they feel it's okay. I don't care. <coughs> yeah, good night, John. Good night, Lori. I don't know what's going on. All the dogs are howling in the neighborhood last night and the night. I went down and checked, and there were people there moving around, so I went on again because I was worried, maybe. Because you know how that works. If the dogs are barking for a long time, could be somebody in distress or something. And so I always check it out. Hi, Mike. Stacy. Sweet Jane. Missing Sky. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. Hi, Penny. Um, Pink Sapphire. Hey, how are you doing? I can't hear Dana talking. My audio is not working. Ah, uh -huh. that's too bad. He says hi to Tracy. And Zoe, 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 everybody was calling you. Zoe, you would come over and say hi. Hi, Tracy. Sergeant Mamanox. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Mamanox, you're awesome. Um... Well, apparently, that's what I say. I just wanted to put that out there because it bugged me that people can actually think like that. And I got a lot of that in the last uh, week or so, not quite a week. It's pretty crazy. It's, di it's disappointing, anyway, that there's people out there like that. It really, truly is. It really makes you wonder what the world is coming to. Um, and Aqua, yeah, you folks are way too kind. Thank you. And Starlight... I uh, say hi to everybody. I'll read your comments after. It's a short one tonight. We're in the studio from early this morning. And at 7 o'clock, I headed home. Routine, uh, just like, oh, man, I'm going to have to go home and just get on here right away before I can do anything. Because I wanted to get something out there about that. Because it's bugging me all day. My computer is full, like uh, what I covered last night. I'm putting in, importing pictures and stuff into that. And so tonight or tomorrow, I'll finish it off. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. We're coming back with a whole bunch of the headlines I still haven't got to. 
And I got like 300 of those suckers there, so it's time to start rolling out 40 or 50 of them a night for a few nights and get rid of them. Excuse me. And bring them into the conversation too, right? And that's the whole point. You bring them all out, then it sticks in your mind, and then when I mention it later on, it has context for you, right? And so that's so important that you get a taste of that too, that you understand those 40 headlines and another 40 of these and another 40 of them, uh, because it is, right? That's what make that's what gives you your power, and you got power, right? You know the narratives, folks. Don't forget that, right? Your power. You can stomp anybody into the ground in a fair debate right now. Ain't nobody ever going to say bananas to anybody that comes around here and get away with it. <laughs> That's one thing I know for sure. Those days are long gone. <laughs> we done them in on that one, right? Alrighty, 35 minutes. It's a little short tonight, but still respectable. 35 minutes. I'm happy with it. Get something to eat. Get some sleep. Be ready for tomorrow night because we'll be back again and have a bit of fun for sure. We'll see you folks tomorrow night.